I'm Dr. Gwen Pearson. I'm from the Purdue Department of Entomology. And I'm here today to talk to you about entomology, which is something a lot of people have never heard of. Um, basically, study of insects. Uh, and it's not only have a lot of people not heard of it, they don't really consider it as a career option. So hopefully I can convince you in the time that we have that this is a fascinating way to make a living. Sometimes it's not easy to convince people they should care about bugs because we tend to focus more on the negatives. But all of your food, the world around you, your health, um, all of that is co directly connected to insects. And these are the four broad areas that entomologists work in. We're very much applied biologists. We use our knowledge of insects and other related little animals like spiders and millipedes to solve real world problems. Many entomologists work in food production. That can take a lot of forms. The one most people immediately think of is pollination. Bees and bee health are a huge focus for working entomologists. Pretty much all crops have insect pests. And balancing their control is a serious issue that keeps entomologists busy worldwide. I have a pesticide can here, and that represents the balancing act entomologists have to do every day. We have to balance being able to protect bees, other pollinators, the helpful good predatory insects with controlling the bad insects, right? The caterpillars, uh, the beetles, the other insects that want to eat our food. So a lot of what entomologists do is figure out how to use the least amount of pesticides to produce the most amount of food. We want to work smarter. Here's a fantastic example of a way we figured out how to not use any pesticides but still be able to achieve great insect control. PIX is the Purdue Improved Crop Storage System. In areas where there's subsistence farming, they don't have access to refrigeration or other elaborate storage systems, but you have to store your seeds so that you can plant them next year. PIX is a system of three plastic bags. That's it. When you seal the bags, you reduce the amount of oxygen in the bag and any insects inside it will basically suffocate. Another major field in entomology is medical and veterinary entomology. Tick research, mosquito prevention, dog hornworms, all of that falls under this category. This is a photo of Dr. Kate Hill, who works at Purdue uh, investigating ticks. Mosquito transmitted diseases are super nasty and are a serious problem at home and abroad. Uh, military entomology is a big piece of this field. Um, basically, how can we keep our people safe when they're deployed all over the world? If you've ever worn insecticide or repellent-treated clothing, those were first developed in the military, and now we can all benefit from that. Also, just saying, uh, the, <laughs> the military will send you to school and pay you to learn about entomology, and then you will be commissioned as an officer. So, sweet deal. Urban entomology is where termites, roaches, bed bugs, all that other stuff ends up. Urban entomologists are the ones that make sure that your pizza does not come with extra unexpected toppings. Uh, if you want to own your own business, this is a fantastic area to work in. It's, there's a lot of entrepreneurs, um, but also it's a really important thing for public health. Regulatory entomology is another really big field, and a lot of it is state and federal entomologists working to keep our people and environment safe. Uh, a big piece of regulatory entomology is inspections. Think about how much stuff moves around the globe every day. Um, some of our most difficult pests to control are invasive species that came in with shipping materials. Uh, and yes, there are cute inspection dogs. Um, so a great example is termites. They can move in those wooden pallets that you find everywhere. Controlling invasive species is really, really expensive. Um, the annual global cost of controlling invasive species is estimated to be almost a trillion dollars a year. A year! Um, here in the United States, we spend, on average, about $150 billion controlling mosquitoes. This graph is the top 10 most expensive invasive species in the world. 70% of them are insects. Okay. This story starts the way a lot of entomology stories do, which is somebody said, hey, I found a weird bug. So the state entomologist looked at it and said, yeah, that is a weird bug. I don't think it's supposed to be here. They sent it off to the federal entomologists who are specialists in taxonomy, and they identified it as, yes, this is an Asian giant hornet, and it is not supposed to be in Washington state, which is where they found it. Um, then they sent that back to the state. The state investigated some more. The state entomologist found a hive. And so then the state and federal folks worked together to isolate, trap, and kill all of the murder hornets. So now we're waiting to find out if that was successful. So this partnership between local, state, and federal entomologists means that we can respond quickly to a potential new pest. I mean, they are called murder hornets, so even if the thing that they mostly murder is bees, it would be very bad if they were permanently established in the United States. Regulatory entomology overlaps with conservation ecology. 
we want to protect what we have. And to do that, we have to understand how the world works. Um, forest service, natural resources, private groups like the Nature Conservancy, these are all places that uh, hire entomologists to help us figure that stuff out. Dung beetles are worth an estimated $380 million a year to the livestock industry. Why are they worth so much? Well, with beetles, the fields aren't full of poop, and they also reduce the spread of parasites. So that's a huge amount of money that farmers can save. Ants and termites are the janitors of the world. We don't particularly like them when they're in our houses, but they are super important in natural systems. Geneticists rely on insects really heavily to understand how genes work in our bodies. Uh, you know that you have the instructions for everything in your body, in all of your cells, but how does your body know that fingers only go in the end of your hands and not in your nose? So this fly has had its antennae replaced by a leg. It's had a gene knocked out, which confused the body about where exactly legs should be, and instead of an antenna, it has a leg. How does your body know which end is the head end and which end is the end where the poop comes out? How does everything get sorted out? Insects showed us how the same genes are rearranged in different ways to create different bodies. So that's a whirlwind tour through entomology and career options. Uh, and I hope you at least get a sense of how important entomology is in having our daily lives. And I also wanna point out that in terms of animals on earth, over 80% of the animal species that we know about are bugs. So hopefully that gave you something to think about and I would love to answer questions and I also have a variety of live insects here if you wanna look at those.